Now, the materials are probably more the, the deep-seated thing in our culture, in our uh, tradition, in our history. This material is of great import. Like we have, the, we are using material in the transportation, in the housing, the clothing, communication, recreation equipment, right? And the food production, everything has some material. Now, these materials or any material, they are of that much importance that we have named the ages, right? The eras with the material. Like we have the stone age, we have the bronze age, we do, we have the iron age, the plastic age, the, the carbon age now recently, which is going on. So it shows that the material has importance in the human life. Right? Like we, we have other things as well. Like previously we were eating raw food long, long ago. Then this barbecue things came, we burned the food and we, we cooked it. But we don't say that we have the raw food age, we have the barbecue age, and now you have the burger, the pizza, all these things. We, so we can say that now it is fast food age. But they, those things are not of that important. But we have our stone age, bronze age, iron age, right? So the early civilization have been designated by the level of their materials development, how they use material, which material they have used, and how they develop their tools, their equipments from different material and material, right? So if we see the stone age, it was like the first, just after like you can say, even the before the human civilization began, right? So we were using, we by we mean the human, we were using the stone for different uh, purposes. How we use it, we just shape the stone into different things. Like you see here, the bowl is made up of stone, some of these uh, sharp tool, right? All these things made up of stone. So that's why this age is known as like, the 3000 BC, right? And before. So this era is known as Stone Age. After some time, the human start using the bronze. Bronze is what it is, an alloy of copper and tin, right? Like from 3000 BC to 1200 BC, the human has uh, used bronze to, to make different tools and equipment, right? So ability to modify material by refining using heat, they the, how the human civilization begins, the human civilization actually begins when they start using mainly the fire for some purposes. They they use as the purpose of heat, right? Before the fire and all these, you can say the civilization was not that much good. But when they conquered over the fire, previously there was fire. It doesn't mean there was no fire, but there was no controlled fire, right? There was, let's say there's a fire in the, 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 the forest. So the people were afraid of it and they were not able to control it. Later on, they have the fire like in the small uh, portion, like fire in the kitchen, fire somewhere here, there. So then what happens? Then the, the human start working in the night, you know, previously the nights were very cold, but when they, 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 they got control of the fire, then they start working in the night and the lights and all these things came. So somehow the human civilization begins, right? And from that time, but it is a different story. But, but when they use this heat to reshape the bronze metal, right? And to make the equipment. So that age is known as the bronze age. Then later on, from 1200 BC to present, we, this is known as iron age. So in this era, the casting and alloying were not perfected like before until you can say here, they are saying up to 16th century. So these processing, the casting, the alloying, they were not perfect. But in the 18th and 19th century, these things, the human got like control on all these things. They, 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 the humans became master how to modify, how to alter the shape of the steel and different types of like iron alloys. And now you see even in today's world, all these equipments, most of the equipments are made somehow from the iron, either pure iron or some alloy of iron, right? And it happened mostly in the 18th and 19th century. So the Iron Age actually started from 1200 BC to today. So it doesn't mean we are not using iron now. Although there are other ages came, but the iron is still uh, here and we are using it, right? Then later on, recently in the 20th century, the plastic age came when the, the discovery of polymers happened. So we see different uh, products. You see the, the modern cloth is what we have, right? All the equipment, you see the, the computer, the, the, the cover for all these things, some uh, utensils, right? All these things made up of somehow from polymer. Even nowadays you see the furnitures, the mostly 
all these things right are made up of uh, somehow plastic so this era after 1940 we call it plastic age and it is still right so we are still using the plastic is one of the main material for the contemporary society then in the 1950 the breakthrough happened in the silicon age right so the commercialization of silicon technology like the ic different types of ic's the integrated circuits all the electronic devices your mobile phone laptop computer all these things the your wifi devices sensors so this brings somehow a revolu revolution in the human history right the communication started the information the way of communicating like if you are sending message from here to some other country it becomes very fast previously the letter and all these things were used so this silicon has bring like somehow a big revolution in the human history that's why we named the the era after 1950 as a silicon age right so all these things you see whatever mobile phone you have somehow they have the silicon as the main material so here is just the summary stone age the bronze age the iron age and somehow they 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 divide the iron age into like steel age they are also saying but mainly it is iron age up till here then we have the here they they miss the plastic you know we have the plastic age here in the 1940 right the silicon age and now recently they are saying this is the carbon age with the new development like the graphene different types of carbon uh material so which we are using previously we were using silicon right now the graphene is using but it is still research is going on in these thing like previously we have the ele electrical equip uh, de electronic devices small small component resistor transistor all these things now what we are doing we are adding some graphene to that and we see the properties of those uh, component and it is changing so that's why some people are saying that after 2010 we have the carbon age but it this things varies from people to people some people say differently and some say differently but anyway so by showing all these things i just want to tell you that the historical perspective of materials in the human uh life is very very uh, important so the earliest human they were having the material it doesn't mean that they don't have the material but they don't have the techniques the the, the, the modern techniques they don't have how to change how to shape reshape the material so by this the different ages what we have done we discovered some techniques how to uh, reshape the material how to make some uh, equipment which we need right so you can say how to change the shape of the material into desired shape so previously they were using like naturally occurring like stone wood clay skins and these things they were using right but later on when they found the techniques they were using the pottery of various material so the main material which now we are using right are the metals the polymers and the ceramics and one more thing the composites but we will discuss it later so all these we are using now now here it doesn't mean that all these discoveries has stopped right if we are saying the historical perspective we are studying today we are studying the stone age the iron age which was 102 like you can say 1000 years ago so thousands year after the students will study our history right so for them our things will be historical so still the development is going on we are having the new technologies the new techniques are coming and we are modifying the material in different ways and we are having you can say the comfort in our life the different types of luxurious things in our life right like if you take example of the automobile it would have not been possible with the without the availability of any expensive steel if it was not an expensive then it would have not possible then there would we will see car but very few car it would not be the case like now every one of you have car right so it is possible because it is cheap so different types and all these the sophisticated electronic devices are made up of semiconductor material silicon germanium and all these things but still if you see here the things have not stopped now we, the people the humans are working on the printed electronics right so they will print a sensor on your hand on any where you want want in your body and then it will work so this you see this is the printed electronics the, or you can say the flexible electronics things are coming right so the development and the invention all these things are not stopped here it is going on and we expect from you people to have more now here now what is this material science we are studying the definition right 
So material science is an interdisciplinary field that addresses the fundamental relationship between the processing, the structure and properties of material and develop them for the desired application, technological application, which we are saying the performance. So these four terms, the processing, structure, properties and performance, it makes a tetrahedron, right? And it is very famous in the material science. Now, what does it mean? It means it is interdisciplinary field, right? The material science. So if we process a material, any material you have, take an example of the iron. If you process it, what will happen? The structure will change. The, maybe the, the, the macro structure or the micro structure, it will change. It will change the properties of the material. And based on the properties of the material, we choose the material for different application for the performance. If you take example of the uh, your bridge last uh, semester, you might have done it. So you know the properties of the wooden stick, the ultimate tensile strength, you know it, right? Somehow some uh, we provided it to you or some student have done, you might have done experiment here and you have found the properties of the material. So once you have the properties of the material, then you use the material and you, you choose the material for a specific purpose, right? Which is very important. Now with the processing, this processing can be natural, it can be artificial, we can do it, right? It changed the properties of the material and this is what happened in the Titanic uh, ship. Now, how many of you have watched the Titanic movie? Okay, so what do you think? Why the Titanic ships sank? What happens actually to the Titanic? Look, whatever happens, let's say we have the ship, right? Somehow, let me try to make a ship. Or maybe small boat, but if we have the iceberg here, so of course, if you ask anyone that if this hit the iceberg, it will something will happen to it, right? But this is not the reason that the ship hit the iceberg and it sank. Okay, this is somehow an answer, but I am saying, let's say, even if it hit the iceberg, it would have not sank, right? Then some people are saying, if, like there was, let's say there was no iceberg, then the ship would have not sank. Then you can say that the, even if the ship you did not uh, go, the, if the ship did not go into the water, it would have not sank, right? Or some people are saying if they would have not made, so the people would have not died. But this is not the the, the answer, right? Look what happens actually on the hull of the ship. Here there were steel plates, right? When it hit the iceberg. So the steel plates buckle, right? The steel plates actually bend. And somehow you can say the, 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 the hull of the ship is damaged. And then the water come inside and then the whole things happen. But the question here is why the steel plate breaks or buckle? Now there are two main reasons. The, of course, it would have not the, the person who has made it, like the people, they would have not used like the weak material. The steel was strong enough, right? But here, some natural processing occurred. Now, when the ship reached here, this area, so the temperature was too cold. And when you cool a material, cooling is what? Actually, cooling is a processing. So cooling changed the properties of the material, the structure of the material, right? When I was preparing for the lecture, I watched one video you can watch. If you have a rubber pipe, right? If you have a rubber pipe, small, simple rubber pipe, right? Uh, which you are using either for the gas or anything, right? In your houses, that rubber pipe is very soft. If you hit the rubber pipe with the hammer, what will happen? Nothing will happen, right? Because it is rubber pipe, it is very flexible. Nothing will happen to the rubber pipe. But if you freeze the rubber pipe, you can try this in your home. If you freeze the rubber pipe or you, let's say you pass the liquid nitrogen to freeze it quickly. If you pass the liquid nitrogen from the rubber pipe and then you hit the rubber with the, uh, the rubber pipe with the hammer, it will break like a glass, right? It will break like a glass. You can have this experiment, right? And you can watch, even I will share the, the video. So now what happens to the rubber pipe when we cool it? This, this cooling is actually processing, right? So the structure and properties of the material change. The so same happened here to the ship. Because of the cooling, the, the steel material behaved differently, right? And any material, some material, you might have a material which will be very soft, 
but if you cool it it might behave like the egg shell right very fragile very brittle material it can be can be after changing the temperature so if they would have keep this thing in the mind that the ship will goes to area where the temperature will be very low and the ship might go to area where the temperature will be very high so then even if the ship hit the iceberg the steel plate would have that much strength that it would have not buckled and the water should not come inside the ship and it should not break into two and sink the, the the whole scenario would have not happened right so this is the thing the i just want to tell you that what is the relation of processing with all other things so when we do the processing the structure change the properties change and when the properties has changed then we choose or we decide whether we will be using this material for this application or not right so these things you have to understand now here what is the difference between material scientist and material engineer it was in the book so i put the slide usually in this the slides which i have prepared there will be too much text right i will not read the whole text for you this is for your purpose but i will just summarize the things now the material scientist and material engineer they are two different people right let's say we have material scientist we have material engineer what will be their duty the material scientist usually they work on the material how to improve the material how they are uh, bringing new materials to us right to modify the material to change the properties of the material they are dealing with the material thing once the material is ready then the material engineer use that material for their application right so the difference between these two is like the material scientist develop or synthesize new material whereas the material engineer is using that material but nowadays it is not the case we want all the graduates to be material scientist and material engineer at the same time that's why you people are studying the material science course right so we want you to be material scientist and material engineers because the company don't want to hire two different people they want one person who can do both the task right so that's why we are having this course in the mechanical curriculum right are you with me okay very good so